WandaVision Episode 5 Thoughts. So, as usual, spoilers for the MCU leading up to this point, including this episode. As usual, I recommend videos talking about the Easter eggs and such on the show, especially videos made by new rock stars, Screen Rant, Nerdist, and Screen Crush. Now, let's see. I want to very briefly, before I get into my prepared notes, you know, we, we already knew that this show was going to be dealing with grief. I really appreciate, I mean, it is essentially a visualization of what it feels like to grieve. You know, Wanda, the, the, there are, they, they talk about five stages of grief. And Wanda is clearly stuck on bargaining. She She's bargaining with the world to make, yeah, to, to keep from facing the grief. And, you know, obviously in real, you know, in, in real life, I think basically every human being at some point in their life will grieve. You know, everyone, like, I mean, I don't know, I guess if you're, uh, um, what's it called? Like, um, hermit or something. I don't know, I guess maybe those don't grieve, but everybody else, you know, yeah. So at some point, someone in your life that you care about is going to die. And... You know, I've, I've, I really appreciate when media helps, you know, discuss grief and, you know, I guess by now it's been several months, but, you know, a while back I did a video talking about the movie, I can't believe I, give me a second, it's right on the tip of my tongue. I think it's called Don't Look Now, not Don't Look Down. But, yeah, you know, that's a movie about grief. And it deals with it really, really well. And so does the show. And I really appreciate it. I mean, so, yeah, everybody will at some point in their life grieve. Most of us don't have superpowers. And it can be difficult to do a good job visualizing grief. Actually, come to think of it, I think... I don't really watch Pixar movies myself. I, I hear they're great. I'm not trying to criticize them. I don't watch a lot of animation. But I've heard that some of the Pixar movies are really great at dealing with grief as well. And yeah, the the you know, it's great when you can visualize it because it's diff grief is difficult to define with just words and to make easy to communicate between people with just words. So here, you know, on this show, we see what it, what is grief if you have superpowers, if you can raise the dead, if you can make other people pretend that the that the world is the way you wish it were, you know, the the way that you thought your life would be back, bef back when you were innocent, you know, when when she was a child in Sokovia and in, you know, basically the Soviet Union, it's a country in the Soviet Union, watching bootleg American TV, looking at the happy families on TV, and, and hoping that maybe one day you grow up and you can be that. And then to have it ripped away by a Stark missile and, uh, you know, Ultron being petty and trying to shoot, just e even if he can just kill one more person that would, you know, and and for Thanos to come along with with the gauntlet, you know, all they wanted was time. And Vision at the end of the movie said, you know, tries tries to can you know ha has to break it to Wanda. We are out of time, and you know the the whole thing forcing her to first she has to kill the love of her life, and then she realizes that she might as well not have because he was. You know, they, they didn't prevent Thanos from getting the, the Mind Stone. And, you know, some some people... In Endgame, the Thanos that she gets to confront isn't the Thanos who did it. And I'm not gonna, 
like, I, I know a lot of people really hate that about the movie, that the Thanos that they fight at the end of the movie is not the Thanos of Infinity War. And I'm not really going to try to make, you know, I'm, I'm not going to do apologism in this video for, for the movie. I maintain that it's, you know, it's, it's incredible, but, it's, and, and some people admit that it's incredible. Some people also think that it's incredible, but do think that that's a, a flaw. I don't know that I necessarily consider it a flaw, but I'm not going to go into that at length here. But in a lot of fictional stories, you get to confront the person who hurt you. And Wanda doesn't even get that. You know, and, and she also isn't the one to finish off Thanos. You know, so I, I think that actually only makes her grief even even stronger. You know, she didn't even get to, like, I mean, you know, obviously it didn't exactly help matters, but at least Thor did get to, you know, he, he was able to chop Thanos' head off. And so the, the, all the pain that he's carried for all this time between the, you know, so, so, yeah. But, but yeah, I really appreciate the, the, the move, the, the TV shows. Disney Plus shows depiction of grief and how, you know, basic like we see it especially when whenever someone confronts her with it, she just can't, you know. So she rewinds, you know, she rewinds the episode of the sitcom in episode two, and I want to say episode three is the one with the jump cut edit and you know all the she she keeps trying to, to get away from the truth, to edit it out of the, of the show that has her perfect life. And in this episode, you know, she straight up, she threatens Hayward with, with all those guns. And I mean, if next time he has, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> he was already trying to kill her, you know, if the next time she shows up, even if she doesn't look dangerous, he might attack her, you know, with a, with a gun or, or a drone or something as just a precaution. Because if you give her a chance, you know, not only might she kill you, but she might, you know, they, they, they're talking about what if she expands the force field? What if she, you know, inside West, Westview, she's warped reality to be what she wants it to be. What if she expands the force field and changes the entire world? You know, I uh, so so yeah, really appreciate that. I I wanted to very briefly talk about the. You know, I, I've heard some some theories. I think there's a good chance that the people that you know, Monica said, you know, I know, uh, what was it, Deep Space? I forget the what she called it, but she was like. I know someone who would love to work on this, and a lot of people are saying Reed Richards. I think that's very likely, yes. And some people have been talking about, you know, the the weird scans that Monica got. I I agree. That's I think that's the the scanner recognizing that she has her superpowers now, and you know, I I heard at least one person theorize that that's because. She, it's, it's the combination of the blip and her being thrown out of the, you know, we still don't know the long-term effects of having been inside the force field and then leaving the force field. We've only seen someone who left it not very long after they left it. So there's, there's some chance that, you know, like the, yeah, so let's see, the, the, I guess that might have been it. For theories, um, if I think of more during the video, I'll finish it. Now, uh, yeah, so so I just rewatched Age of Ultron. I'm I'm rewatching all the uh, MCU movies featuring Wanda, and yeah, yeah, you know, Wanda says she could tell that Tony Stark's fear would control him and make him self-destruct. Maybe that's somewhat what's happening to her, you know, in, in this show. Her fear of losing vision is driving her to self-destruct. 
Mouse. And yeah, so so like I said, the the Easter egg videos by others, you know, by the ones I mentioned earlier, they talk, you know, some of those talk about what exactly the the opening, you know. I I haven't watched enough sitcoms from the the eighties to to know, but the the, um, but but yeah, you know, various. Ah, what's it called? You know, pe people who are, excuse me, there are people out there who have recognized them and talked about the exact. Let's see. Friends. And we see Wanda, you know, trying to use magic to make them sleep and legitimately kind of surprised that it's not working, you know, and it actually, you know, she also had trouble right before she gave birth. So, you know, you can't help but wonder, like, for most people, most of the time when she's using her magic on someone, that person has little to no magic of their own to counter. Some of the only times we've seen her countered is when going up against Thanos, you know, and the... When she and yeah, when she fights the the Black Order. So yeah, you know I can't help but wonder if this is, you know, the babies don't want to sleep, and you know in the, in the comics one of them is a speedster like their uncle Quicksilver, and the other one has magical powers. I think they're probably gonna stick with that, but I could be wrong. But I think the one with magic powers is basically using their magic to also shield the other one. You know, the one with magic powers is the one that's aging them up, the one that keeps them from sleeping at the start of the episode, that whole thing. And yeah, and new parents having trouble dealing with their babies is also very sitcom. And, and Agnes breaks character and talks to Wanda as if she's the director or something, and. And, and Wanda seems confused. You know, some, some people are saying either she's pretending when in the sitcom world, or maybe she's developed, you know, maybe it's like a, uh, let's see, so now, the, the, I, I don't want to accidentally use the wrong term, dissociative identity disorder. So she's basically, you know, there's one personality for the sitcom, and there's one personality for you know, when it, it, the other one is the one we see when she walks out of the force field and, you know, dragging the drone. And, you know, as, as far as I understand, basically, like, what Vision said, that, you know, Vision basically doesn't want Agnes to, to hold the babies or something. And what Vision said and did was not in the script. You know, Agnes expected him to just let her, you know, go and, and help with the babies. Excuse me. Because, it, it you know, it, it led very naturally into that. You know, Wanda's like, I don't know. I, I'm having some trouble with them. And then Agnes comes in. I will help babysit. But then when Vision comes in and says, you know, may, maybe we'll take care of the kids ourselves. Then Agnes doesn't quite know, you know, I mean, I mean we... We botched it. I, should it, should we take it from one? You know, and just yeah, it's it's so creepy. I I I'm not. You're not wrong if you don't love this show. I just don't. I don't know how to talk to you if you don't love this show. It's incredible how much it packs in. You know, you've got all this sitcom stuff, including you know the way they talk, the the clothes, the hair, the the way it's shot, the the sets. And then you have these hints that, because it's in the MCU and we know what's happened up to this point, so we have these little, and then you have the comic stuff that's like, you know, because cause so much stuff is coming, you know, they you got the dog Sparky, which apparently also in the comics dies. I, I haven't read the, the specific comics that this is based on, but one of the Easter egg people talk about in the video, you know, in, in their video talk about in the comics, it's the same thing, that the dog accidentally eats something that its system can't process and it dies. You know, just the, all these, it's, it's unreal how much they 
pack in there. And yeah, and Vision points out to, to Wanda, Agnes breaking character, and Wanda seems to not really understand. Like when it was happening, she was also like, What's what's happening? You know, what's going on? But then when Agnes goes back into it, Wanda almost acts like she didn't see it. It's it's very gaslighty with with this whole thing, and I I didn't I didn't note it in the so I'm I'm just briefly going to talk about it here. Their fight at the end of the episode, I I have a lot of notes about it. That I'll get to, but one thing I wanted to say right now, so I don't forget, is Wanda tries to end it by running credits, and that's worked up to this point. All the other times she was able to resolve it and and he even says what we're just gonna sit down and watch tv and then turn in and then tomorrow you're gonna forward everything some more in time you know no this is this is wrong we have to address this now the the thing of like an argument between the main couple and then the credits run like if it were just a sitcom this is where like the the audience would would laugh knowingly and said uh, those two. What are you gonna do? They are always at each other's throats. You know, it's just they're gonna be fine tomorrow morning. We'll see next week. They're gonna be smiling and happy again, just like it always. You know, it's so. In addition to her trying to end the argument and doing it in this way, that again is like a, a visual, a visual way of saying, you know, base like everybody. I, I defy you to find one person who's, if, if you've ever had an argument with another person, there's been at least one point in that argument where you just wished it would stop talking. And that's basically what that is. You know, she's like, if I run credits, he has to stop. That's how this works, you know, and just it's so brilliantly done. And I, I forget, did, did we start to hear a little bit of laughter? When the credits started rolling, I th the music at least started, you know, so it is, it's acting like, and I honestly, I was sitting there like, are they actually, and then no, Vision manages to break through, you know, he's like, no, we're not going to, we're going to have this conversation now, this is important, this is not okay, we have to resolve this now, you are going to listen to me and we're going to have an honest conversation about this, and it's just, and and it's honest i mean it's legitimately uncomfortable like it's like we're like if you if you're if you're a guest at someone's house and the the host and their and their partner start arguing like this you're like um should i, should I go like maybe i could you know i, I don't want to be part of this i don't want to i don't want to watch two people arguing this is really uncomfortable and it's just the mcu keeps topping like the the every, every time I think they they can't possibly outdo uh, I, don't, I don't know that I've ever actually thought that but you know I'm I'm supposed to say that right every time they s set a new high standard they manage to actually top it each each Avenger Avengers movie is better than the last each Captain America movie is better than the last it's and each episode of the show is better than the last and it's just it's such because it's such an honest. Like, that's how people talk when one of them is just, they, Vision can't anymore. He can't. This is too much. It's gone on for long enough. He keeps giving her an opening. He keeps being like, maybe we should go home. And like, what is that thing that, that's breaking it? You know, they hear a noise and he wants to leave the house. And so she ends up having to rewind because the beekeeper, and now he, He's, it's not okay anymore. He's tried and he, he's given her openings and she refuses to take them. So he has to, he has to force the conversation now. He doesn't want to, he loves her, but it's, it, it has to stop. And she just, she won't let, you know, and, and when there's a knock at the door, he legitimately doesn't believe that she didn't do that. And, and just, yeah, anyway, I have more notes about it. I'm going to go back to my prepared notes. And, it's, I, you know, Agnes is like, I'm looking for your hard liquor. It's not for me. It's for the babies. What kind of babysitter do you think I am? Do you drink when babysitting Jake? Not at first, but he wears me down. Like, 
it's such a sitcom thing of like the the casual alcohol joke of like it's like is she actually gonna get I, I think I've heard about that I think I I, I believe I'm not I, I would hope nobody does it anymore I'm not it was never okay to do but I've heard that some like years like decades maybe a hundred years ago or something some people actually did give babies just a tiny little sip of liquor so they would just go to sleep so you could go to sleep and it's like that is not okay and it's honestly not even okay to joke about and it's like this again it's this thing like there are so many sitcoms that would just have that joke and essentially we're laughing because it's not okay you know it's this acknowledgement it would really be messed up if a babysitter gave liquor to babies to get them to sleep, you know. But given that there's already so much, like, we're already, like, Agnes is like a witch, right? She's, she's like, mind-controlling, manipulating her at the very least so that, you know, the twins can give birth to the devil or something. So when we hear her suggest that she's going to, give liquor to the babies, we're like, please don't leave her alone with the babies, you know, just, and, you know, just like that, the twins have gone from being infants to old enough to walk, and it is this thing, like, she, she wanted them to not make so much noise, they're not making, you know, so, so it's like, either she, subconsciously age them up or you know the one of them that has powers aged up you know I, I certainly can't imagine that it is in response to Wanda you know uh, let's see what's the word Wanda wanted to resolve the situation and you know they like on some level understood that they so they aged up and I love that you know ultimately the the overall reveal the the final reveal of it is the shot where they're standing there at the foot of the stairs but before that she's looking you know she's she like she turns away or something and then she turns back to look at the babies and we just see this image of the empty crib and it's such a great because you know, when the Easter egg people talk about how in the comics, originally her babies were made up, like she, no, all comics are made up, but she, she created them out of nothing, basically, because she wanted babies. And when she wasn't focusing enough on them, they would disappear. And they're, you know, and we have this comic panel of an empty crib. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I really thought that I, I do try. I do clear my throat before I start recording. Excuse me. And the yeah, it's it's this. And for yeah, for like a second there, we as viewers are like, so were they just made up? You know, did she? Because like I said last time, that was a very clean birth. You know, that was that is not how quick how clean and how okay I, I wouldn't say painless she did seem to be in pain but that's still wow that is very tv birth not very not at all resembling real birth anyway and 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 the opening comes in and i love the the lyrics you wander the world with the vision of what life could be. That's just beautiful. I love it. That's the it's is absolutely perfect. As as a yeah. And I think I I'm not I'm I'm not one hundred percent sure if somebody I I don't offhand think I heard the sitcom the Easter egg people talking about what that's a reference to, but I feel like that is a thing Thing, that there's at least one sitcom that opens where like they work in the title of the sitcom into the the lyrics in a way that's not too absolutely unbearably obvious and just yeah and let's see, yeah and, and apparently one of the sitcom you know the historic people 
point out that at least one of the sitcom references is Full House, which, you know, Elizabeth Olsen's, you know, her twin, twin sisters that are older than her, you know, Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen were on that show. And honestly, yeah, I just, I really briefly got to, at the end, you know, the, the editing room abridged script at the end of the Age of Ultron script, you know, it, it says Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen fired their agents. And it's like, yeah, how, how frustrating must that be? They, they've been in, they've been in, you know, movies and TV since they were just, you know, barely old enough to talk. And, well, okay, maybe that's an exaggeration, but, you know, on, when they, when Full House started, they were very, very small. Just, just tiny little children, and, you know, they've, yeah, so they've been in TV and movies since just, and then their younger sister gets a huge role, you know, multi-picture deal in the MCU, but they don't, you know, that's gotta be frustrating. It is wild to see baby pictures and other pictures of growing up of Vision when we know for a fact that he was born a full-grown man. You know, that is just... And, and yeah. Wow. Let's see. And, yeah. And so right after the sitcom opening, we go back to S.W.O.R.D. and we start hearing what Monica said during the debriefing, since she's the first person who's left the force field. I really, I, I love how this episode did it. Of um, one, basically every other scene is the sitcom, and every other scene is the, yeah, the, the rest of the show with, with Sword, you know. I'd like for them to keep doing that, but I can understand if they want to change it up further. But yeah, that I, I thought it worked incredibly well. And it's like, what, 25? I don't think it's a full 30 minutes even. And all these really short, intense scenes. Like, honestly, I think I, uh, ultimately I will probably binge watch, you know, right before the final episode comes up, I'll binge watch all the ones leading up to it. And I'll see, but I can imagine right now it's probably going to be very intense. Like, at least some of the... Once S.W.O.R.D. comes into it, these have been some very... These two episodes have been very, very intense. You know, it's a ton of information and development that, that you get very quickly, which... You know, it was, it was never a slow show, you know, right? Right from the start, there's been this, like, we're, we're trying to figure out how can Vision be back, and these little hints, you know, my husband and his indestructible head, and it's like, oh, that, please don't say that, because it's really not, and that's actually incredibly traumatizing that his head is not, in fact, indestructible. And I like Dr. Lewis fangirling over Monica. I have to admit, I hadn't really thought about one of the Easter egg video people who pointed out. That's not because she knows her from sword that's because she's been watching the sitcom <laughs> honestly i i don't think in the show they say either either way but possibly yeah she has been great on the sitcom you know and let's see yeah and we have the the tests of monica all supposedly blank and i have a hunch that it's not that there's something wrong with the machine You know, at, at first I figured that it wasn't from the blip that she got her powers. I, I guess I just kind of figured, wouldn't they do a test before they release her? Before they put her back in the field, even if she's grounded? Like, I don't know. May, maybe not. But certainly, I would say that it was in part the force field. I don't think she had her powers after the blip, but before the force field. And let's see. What does that say? Uh, 
right, right. Hayward and Wu still don't completely get along as they give the briefing. And poor Jimmy, he's just he's such he's a nice guy, you know, and he, he walks over to to, to dark, dark, I, I wanna say it's Dr. Lewis he's telling and he's like I mean I'm trying not to speak ill of you. This this is he's so sweet. He's 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 precious. I I I I really, really yeah. I, I hope we I hope he's in a lot of future stuff because he's just yeah. He's 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 got the the kind of adorable thing going on that he's just yeah. Please don't please don't pull a Colson and and just kill him to to like motivate a team or something. That's I know I haven't watched Agents of Shield so no spoilers. I will be. I have Disney Plus now so you know the the. I realized that Colson was brought back for that show, but it's still like. He was he he was the glue that held he he and the rest of Shield I know were the you know but he was the first when we first met Shield he was the person you know for for a while every time Shield was even mentioned he would show up you know and then they kill him after so few movies just yeah and and Monica and Hayward argue over Wanda and. You know, it is it is legitimately an interesting argument. Is Wanda a victim or is she the victimizer? You know, we know that her magic is definitely part of this, but is she being manipulated? You know, and she even she says, I, I think it's during the fight with Vision, I don't know how all this started. And I just think that's an interesting thing to say. If it's just a lie, I feel like that's her. I think she might be telling the truth there because it, I, I feel like if she was just lying, why wouldn't she just say, I'm not doing this? But she says, I don't know how this got started, which tells me that she legitimately, like one day she woke up and they were in a sitcom. And she's just kind of been going along with it since that happened. She like you know how that I mean that is a thing. Like if you if if you can't intellectually explain why something feels good, then you might keep going. You know, and if you can't intellectually if you can't logically explain why something hurts, you stop. Well. It feels good to be in the sitcom, so she keeps going, and it feels bad to try to admit that she's grieving. So every time something is about to pull her out of the sitcom, she just she refuses, you know. So I, yeah, it's a very interesting quest because at the end of the day, she is very dangerous. And the first time we saw her, like I think I said in the, the last episode thought video, I did as well. There is no way that she didn't get people killed. It, I mean, we already know that, that some people killed due to Sokovia. And she didn't create Ultron. But she did help him. Without his help, I think there's a chance that Ultron would not have been able to get as far with his plan as he did. And there's no way that the Hulk didn't kill anyone when he went rampaging. And, and she was the one who did that. She even, she fought through the pain. She, you know, Quicksilver was like, it's it's okay, we'll stop. You know, we'll we'll go back to Ultron, we'll say, it's, you know, we did our, we did our best. And most of them, we got most of them, you know. That's good, that's, has, that has to be okay. And she's like, no, I want to finish the plan. I want the big one. You know, so, yeah. She... She stopped helping Ultron when she realized that it was going to mean the death of all of, you know, the death of everyone on Earth. But he, she did help him when he said that he, you know, she, she specifically asks, 
are you going to destroy the Avengers? She doesn't ask, are you going to kill Tony Stark? She asks, the Avengers in general. And that's, it's just, you got to be careful when you go there. You know, the moment that you are like, well, they're working with them, so they must be just as bad. That's a recipe for getting a lot of people killed. You know, the, the what, what's it called again? Shared guilt or inherent guilt? Or, I forget exactly what it's called, but yeah. And we see Wanda break in and steal Vision's corpse. <clears throat> now, I haven't been... I, I've heard some people say that Hayward is the villain, and he's, you know, they're, they're trying to do the thing where he's hiding in plain sight. And they, they're talking about, well, he knew where Vision's corpse would be, so he could get that information to Wanda so she could steal it. And I think there's a, there's a chance, and, you know, when she gets the guys to aim their guns at him, that's exactly what a villain hiding in plain sight would be. As You know, I, that's not me. That's the, the Easter egg video people, you know, pointed that out. But I agree. I think there's a, a chance there. I briefly wanted to, that some people have said, why is, you know, why is the vision, that, sorry, Pietro, why is the Pietro, she, you know, at the end of the, this episode of the sitcom, uh, yeah, this, at the end of this episode, why is it the Fox actor, not the MCU actor, and Obviously, it's supposed to be the major mystery. You know, it's it's the hook. It's the cliffhanger. It's you know, we we can't wait. It it feels it it feels physically painful to wait for an entire week to get the information. You know, but the the I think one reason you know I, I you know some have said maybe this maybe this Pietro is like all the other you know. We've, we've seen that a bunch of the other people are real people outside of the sitcom and they're being forced to play a part. I think there's a chance that's what's going on with him. You know, some, some have said, why isn't it just the, the MCU actor? I th you know, for, for one thing, again, repeating a theory that I heard, maybe she can't bring back the dead if they were human maybe she can only bring back the dead if they were synthesoid and you know we also got to keep in mind if she somehow if she found the, the 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 atoms from the mind stone and put them back together she if she's able to pull them apart there's a chance she can put them together as well and she put that back in his head you know, that could bring him, that, that might be enough to bring him back. But a human being, you know, another thing is, if he was buried under normal conditions, then I'm sorry, but I don't want to be morbid. There's not that much left of him. It, we got, we might keep him nine. This, it's been years, you know, what is it, like seven or eight years since, you know, it's six years since Age of Ultron came out, but you know the with with the you know there's the the five year time skip so it's even longer in the MCU you know like unless he was like I don't know mummified I guess you know f frozen I guess you know I'm sorry but his dead his corpse is gone you know so that might be why it's a different but you know obviously the fact that it's the other actor or like you know what's going on we have to know. And they bring out, yeah, they, they talk about how the vision was brought back to life without the Mind Stone. And then the kids found a dog and want to keep him. And it's the, you know, that's, yeah, that's very, yeah, that is both something that happens in real life and in, in sitcoms. And just, yeah. The, the child actors... I, I I don't like criticizing child actors. The the moment like those two words don't even go together. Child actor. No no no. You're you're either a child or you're an actor. I, I basically children shouldn't be made to act at all. But at the same time, if you have to have five year olds and ten year olds on a on a show, 
you know, it's it's just awkward to to cast someone who's you know I've never I've never really had a problem with them casting like twenty somethings or even thirty somethings as teenagers because then when they kiss and talk about sex, it's way less. I mean, teenage characters shouldn't be talking that much about sex either. That's also kind of creepy, but yeah, that's, I think they're okay. The child actors on this show so far. And, you know, the, the, yeah, I feel like they, they do a fine enough job at what they're being asked to do. And they named the puppy Sparky, which I think is from the comics, and, yeah. And, and, yeah, actually, I guess in the comics, it's because it literally, like, I, as far as I, again, I haven't read it, but as far as I understand from others, it's not a real dog it's a synthesize you know it's it's the same kind of machine as vision is essentially and yeah yeah then you might name it sparky because it literally it's electronic you know but the you know here it's because you know let's call it sniffy because it's sniffing around and then it goes and licks the the outlet and you know it gets let's call it sparky that's yeah and that's again like if that happened in real life you'd be like oh does it need to go to the does it, do, do we need to get a doctor to, to check on it? Electricity is not good for a living body, but, you know, it's a sitcom, so it's cute. And and Wanda starts using magic in front of Agnes and says she, she's tired of hiding. It's just, yeah. What aren't you telling me? And Wanda tells the twins they can only take care of a dog when they're ten, so they turn ten right in front of Wanda, Vision, and Agnes, and Agnes just laughs it off, like, children, they grow up so fast, and it's again, just, if they're growing at that rate, what else might be, like, just, it is fundamentally, it, it, it's a scary thing when, you know, thankfully it usually only happens in fiction, but when something, when, when, well, yeah, whether whether in real life or in fiction, when the human body does something that it is not meant to do, you know, and, you know, for, for some examples, watch movies like The Thing or, you know, Cronenberg's The Fly and, and, and just, yeah, you know, it's it's legitimately, there's, there's, you know, it goes into our brain and says, there's something wrong here. This is not okay. And just, and, and, and it's like this cutesy thing with, if we have to be 10 to take care of a dog, I guess we'll turn 10, Mom. And Monica has an idea of how she could enter Westview again with, you know, this this car that can withstand all the, you know, which, I mean, in the trailer, we, we see a, a car at least trying to enter the force field. And, the you know, by the end of this episode, she makes the force field even more powerful, so... And Dr. Lewis has started calling the magic hex because of hexagonal shapes. And, you know, that is one of the internet theories as to why all the hexagons. And, you know, she's like, it's catching on. And, and Monica looks at Boo and he's like, it's, it's not. Nobody else is saying that. Monica seems a little touchy about Captain Marvel. And, you know, like others have pointed out, you know, excuse me. <clears throat> like others have pointed out, last time they were together, they seemed, you know, they were on good terms. They were happy. So maybe she's upset that, uh, Dan, Carol, that Carol was gone for so long. Maybe she feels like Carol could have, you know, helped her mom not, you know, not die of cancer. Things like that. I think there's a chance that Captain Marvel 2 will explain why she's upset, but it's also, you know, and or, you know, help, like, confront that. You know, maybe she, you know, she as an adult confronts Carol and they have a conversation about, you know, the, yeah. And Monica shoots at Geraldine's clothes, and the bullets will not penetrate, and she's like 87% Kevlar, which is what, you know, when she entered the force field, she was wearing Kevlar, 
So literally, you know, it's, it's again, it's such a great, like, they do a really good job of explaining something that's a very comic book concept. You know, literally, Wanda is redefining reality. She's not creating something out of whole cloth, which again makes it interesting. Where did those baby, you know, where did her kids come from? If, you know, because according to Monica, basically everything inside Westview does exist. You know, it's, it's, it has a physical presence. Wanda didn't create anything except maybe the twins. She's, she's changing things so that they fit the sitcom. And yeah, it's, it's like she, you know, what, what, what Monica was wearing wouldn't have fit Geraldine, so she changed it with magic, and yeah. I guess, hypothetically, if, you know, Geraldine, excuse me, like, we're, we're told in the, excuse me, I want to say third episode, when she has the, the babies, we're told that Geraldine doesn't have a home in Westview. And I, I feel like I maybe did bring up, I certainly wondered why, you know, I, I forget if it was on camera or only, you know, off camera, but I, I've wondered if Geraldine didn't, you know, have a, have a home there, how was she, like, for example, changing clothes? Because in the different decades, she's wearing different clothes and such. But I guess maybe Wanda uses her magic to change everyone's clothes into what it needs to be, and hence why Monica was wearing the same thing when she exited as when she went in. It's just that it looked different. It had changed shape, but not, you know, yeah. And yeah, they say it's not an illusion. Wanda is rewriting reality permanently. It's, it's, yeah. And Norm is having trouble keeping up with the computer, and Dr. Lewis managed to send an email, and everyone in the sitcom received them. They read it out aloud, and I hadn't quite, you know, the, the I, I was, you know, wondering why do they all read it aloud? And one of the Easter egg video people said, it's like, you know, because of the computer, the message got past Wanda before she was able to, you know, if she had received it, obviously they wouldn't be receiving it. She'd be changing it, you know. But it got past her because of the, you know, now it's such advanced technology that, you know, and it was like it basically, it was like they, they, felt like they had to, read, you know, it was almost like when they were chanting for the children, you know, suddenly all of them are saying exactly the same thing at exactly the same time. And it's especially creepy that after they, you know, re read the whole thing aloud, then they laugh and Norm says to Vision, what, don't you get it? It's, it's a joke, you know, and it's, the, and, and that's the, the thing that like, I mean, imagine if you yourself suddenly saw something that seemed to say that you weren't, you know, what you thought was real, wasn't real. There's a decent chance that you would just try to laugh it off and, and hope that you didn't see more of it, you know. And Vision wakes up Norm and he freaks out until Vision puts him back in the sitcom days. I'm not sure I expected them to outdo Vision Zombie moving at the end of episode 4, at least not as quickly as the scariest, most messed up, most terrifying thing the MCU has produced, but there you go, just, the, you know, he's like, my sister is sick, please, you have to help me, you know, I can't get in contact with her, you know, Wanda's in my head and all this stuff, and after a while, Vision, like, you know, and so, you know, and it's just, it's so creepy. You know, like, honestly, if he, like, collapsed on the floor, that would be less creepy. But the fact that he goes from this, you know, from being terrified and, and worrying about his six, his, his ill sister, and then just, you know, ah, 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 you know, big smile and the whole, just, wow. 
and Wanda talks to the twins and says, you know, Vision always loves them. And, you know, the, the, yeah, it's, you know, the, the, apparently the title of the episode is actually a very special episode. And it, you know, it's, yeah, it's the very special episode of the, which is also apparently, I, I didn't realize that they, you know, I knew they did it in the 80s, but I honestly thought they also did in the 70s, but apparently not. So, yeah, makes perfect sense. You know, when they do the 80s episode, they do a very special... And, and it is this thing of, like, some of those episodes would deal with, you know, the death of a pet. And that's, you know, for a lot of kids, that's the first... That's the first time they ever experience something dying in real life. You know, they might have seen it in movies. But it's just it's different when it happens in real life. It's it's real in a in a way, and a lot of it, yeah, you know, sitcoms would do a very special. Episode. You know, it's not always about that. There's other you know plots and other things to you know cover. But I'm pretty sure there's at least one sitcom out there that did a very special episode, and it's about like a dog, the the family pet dying or something. And then it gets into, but Wanda is bringing the dead back to life. So could she bring the dog back to, you know, and, and like the twins are like, but you can, mom, you can, you can bring back the dead, you know, and, and Agnes is like, could you, Wanda? And it's like, it's just like lightly prodding, you know, when like the, you know, it would, it would probably better for her to either not say anything or to be like oh kids you can't you can't ask your mother for that that's not you know no nobody can do that kind of thing you know and let's see. right so the 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 dog goes wild as a drone goes into the force field and Monica's trying to talk to Wanda, and, you know, Wanda's eyes, you know, get, get the red glow in them, and then Hayward says, take the shot, and clearly Monica didn't know the drone was even armed, so he did that without her knowledge, and just, yeah, that, that a whole, and, and then Wanda walks out of the force field carrying the drone, and her outfit is like the uniform she used to wear as an Avenger. This will be your only warning. Stay out of my home. You don't bother me. I won't bother you. And Monica tries to talk to Wanda and, you know, appeals to her, says, on some level, you trusted me to, to help, you know, I, I helped deliver your babies, you know, this. And, yeah, and then Wanda goes, I have what I want, and no one will ever take it from me again, which, you know, that that was what she, you know, when when she confronted Thanos, she said, "You took everything from me." So it is this, yeah, and yeah, and and Wanda, you know, makes the the guys with guns point at Hayward until she's back, you know, right before she she enters the force field again. So on some level, she is aware of what's going on. And let's see, what's the other thing? Yeah, and it's it's this thing of like, yeah, she you know she hypnotizes people and and makes them do what she, you know we've seen her do that before. And in Age of Ultron, near the end of the movie, she uses it to get the the people of Sokovia to to leave. And the let's see. And it's also this thing of, like, Hayward thought that, well, with that many guns pointed at her, we're safe. I mean, there's only so many bullets she can stop, right? But because of her psychic ability, she makes them more dangerous. You know, so so it is this thing. Like, I I think there's a, there's a chance that next time Hayward gets, you know, is, is, has a chance to attack her with something that he thinks might kill her, 
I think there's a chance that he'll he'll do it immediately, whether or not she has yet realized that he's even there. I mean, that's if he's if he's going to have a chance of killing her, he almost has to do it when she doesn't know that it's coming because she can stop it, you know, so it is this thing, yeah. Okay, I mean, personally, I'm very much on Wanda's side. I really, you know, grief is one of the most painful things, so, but they do definitely need to get her to stop forcing all these people to help her live out her fantasy life. Yeah. And another advertisement, and it's, you know, what was it called? Lagos, which is where Wanda accidentally killed a bunch of civilians, and so all the red that's on the table, that you know, just wipe it away. That's the blood of all the people she got killed when, yeah. And Mailman Dennis makes another appearance. Yeah, Sparky is dead, and Angus wanted to break it to them gently. You can fix anything, Mom. Fix the dead. You said family's forever. Sparky's family. Bring him back, Mom. And that's, like, well, at the end of the episode, she brings back Pietro, who was family and was dead. So, it is this, yeah. And... Yeah, the, the thing of, you know, having to teach her small children difficult life lessons, very sitcom, and, yeah, and, and Vision confronts Wanda about Nolan. Watch TV, turn in for the night so you can change everything again, and the credits start rolling because Wanda doesn't want to have the conversation. This, all of this, is for us. Before what? I don't remember my life before Westview. I'm scared. And, yeah, Wanda claims to Vision she doesn't know what's going on. She's not in control. And they continue talking on the couch. I mean, it's genuinely compelling relationship drama. You know, you have trust issues. They're arguing over if the way they're living right now is the way they should keep living. They're talking about how what they're doing is affecting other people. It could so easily have just been that Wanda is entirely villainous, giving a twisted monologue, but she does legitimately come across sympathetic here. You know, it's not like the MCU has never done villains that are just mwah ha ha ha. You know, the, the, I love Ronan, but the, the, Sorry, I can't help but repeat the, the joke from the, when, when, in the, in the pitch meeting for, uh, you know, screen rant pitch meeting for Endgame, he points out that it's pronounced the same, it's spelled differently, but Ronan in that movie and Ronan in Guardians of the Galaxy 1, it's essentially, you know, Ronan, you pronounce it the same way, so that's unfortunate, but anyway, Guardians of the Galaxy 1, Ronan. I love him, but let's please not pretend that he's all that complex. You know, he's like, my people used to hate your people, and now my people say they don't hate your people anymore. Well, I still hate your people, and I'm going to get revenge for my people who are the dead of my people. You know, I, I get it. It's, you know, it's it's been like generations of war, and it's not, you know, th there, are, there are people like that in real life who can't forgive of a war that's been over, you know, but it's, there's not that much dimension there. There's a, there's backstory, but he's, yeah. And once again, I love him. I love that movie. And Wanda opens the door, but we don't get to see immediately what she's looking at on the other side of the door yet. And, you know, we see gray hair. So it's, oh, Pietro, I guess. And, we see it's the X-Men continuity Pietro, 
and his accent's completely different. He doesn't sound like either version of Pietro. And I, you know, one, one of the Easter egg people pointed out, I honestly, I, if I had sat and listened to his lines over and over, I would have gotten it, but it's a, it's a, what was it? They said, New York accent, I think, you know, so it is like, the, you know, and, and the, yeah, if he comes from New York and, well, I mean, yeah, they're supposed to live in New Jersey, so I guess it wouldn't be that long, but it, you know, there, there are some family members who don't, who spend years not seeing each other, and, yeah, it's, and, and I, I quite liked Dr. Lewis's line, he recast Pietro? And, like Vision, I'm inclined to believe that Wanda intentionally ended their conversation. The brief cut to Dr. Lewis suggests that Sword isn't part of Pietro showing up like that. Who's the popsicle? I mean, that is kind of what Vision looks like. And the comedy here at the end with both that line and Dr. Lewis talking about recasting Pietro didn't undermine the scariness, suspense, and tension of the, the argument. This might be my new favorite episode. I honestly feel like every single episode is my new favorite. It's incredible how fast a show can move today. This is honestly one of my all-time favorite shows. So when Vision wakes up Agnes, which I think is going to be the next episode, the Halloween, you know, trick-or-treating, you know, that wasn't the first time he woke up somebody. And I can't help but wonder if Hayward is involved in sending in the recast Pietro. He can't bring the real one back to life, but maybe this Pietro is actually a sword agent. He can't very well send Monica back in, since clearly Wanda would recognize her. And a surprise character intro is also very sitcom, and surprise reappearance of a relative we haven't seen on the show before. And I'm not 100% certain if it's also a trope to end a sitcom episode on such... No, actually, yeah, I have seen episodes of sitcoms end with, with that kind of thing, yeah. And, let's see. I forget if I already said this, but it bears repeating. Ten-year-olds in real life do believe their parents can do basically every, anything and everything, like bring back a dead pet, you know. So, let's see. Yeah, so those are all of my prepared notes. I think I have said everything that I wanted to say about the episode, but yeah, I, I, it's incredible how much this, like, the MCU wasn't always incredible at using their movies to build towards the future movies and such. You know, I, I, Iron Man 2 still is not doing that great of a job, like the, the shield stuff feels very awkwardly, you know, put put in there. But this, they they've gotten really good at it by now. They they've gotten really good at using a movie or show to build towards the next. I mean, okay, so we have Monica, you know, the the scanners. The, the scans coming back weird on her seems to suggest she has superpowers now. I mean, actually, yeah, regardless, her character will be in Captain Marvel 2, so we are having the lead into Captain Marvel 2 with that. We have the, you know, possibly Fantastic Four with, you know, maybe they help build the, the car that can enter the force field. That is something, like in the comics, I think I think it's a it flies in the comics, but they do build something that can move through. Is it for multiverse exploration? I, f I forget it exactly, but and the and and yeah, the overall thing. I mean, we already know that Wanda is going to appear in Doctor Strange too, so yeah, and maybe Wu will be. I'm not 100% certain, but I I can imagine he would be in the third Ant Man movie. I'm not sure if Dr. Lewis is going to be in the next Thor movie. I could imagine that maybe not. You know, Jane returning doesn't mean that Darcy also will return. But, yeah, the, you know, a lot of, of different 
things that can come from this one overall thing and without it feeling yeah so that is everything and as usual i am really stoked for the next episode it's incredible how yeah i uh, let's see Right, I, I wanted to briefly mention, one of the Easter egg people pointed out that the ads in the sitcom are essentially like Wanda's subconscious pushing away the pain. You know, the, the, the Stark missile that killed her parents in the toaster, the experimentation, human experimentation on her and Pietro by Baron Strucker, and let's see, and we have the, I guess the Hydra soak is the, just Hydra in general. And let's see, yeah, and, and then in this episode we have the, yeah, there's only four ads, even though it's five episodes, because the fourth episode of the show itself didn't have a fourth episode of the sitcom but yeah so this one the 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 ad was you know trying to make her not feel so bad about lagos basically and yeah that is absolutely everything so i hope you enjoyed watching as i definitely enjoyed watching and recording i'll catch you next time